Welcome back. You're joining Weekend Dialogue on Biz Roundup. And tonight, we've uh, invited to discuss about the country's banking industry, the chairman of National Savings Bank, Mr. Aswin De Silva. Good evening and a warm welcome to you. Good evening to you as well. Thank you for having me. Uh, Mr. De Silva, I think with your exposure internationally and now here at the country's premier bank, the country's National Savings Bank, tell us your view of the banking industry, your overview of uh, our way forward and what you have got to say about National Savings Bank and how you all position yourself currently. I think the banking industry is well positioned right now and if you look at from an industry overall sectoral point of view and industry point of view, uh, I think the banking segment or the banking component of an industry has done well and will, I believe, will continue to do well because the fundamentals are strong. So uh, I really don't think the public at large has anything to worry about. Banking sector as a whole is 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 in uh, is has done well and will continue to do well uh, nsb is in its 44th year uh, in its history i mean if you really look at the last few years the bank has uh, made giant strides both operationally and also looking at uh, new avenues new growth areas etc so and uh, given uh, the plans and the strategies that we have in place, the bank is expected to do well in the future as well. What are your strengths at the moment and what are you looking at as your growth pillars? I think our strength is, the, is, is our core business. The fact that uh, we are the pioneer saving institution in this country. The fact that we are the only financial institution which has a government guarantee on its deposits and the interest earned thereon gives uh, a fair amount of confidence and trust right. amongst the populace of this country. Also the fact that uh, of the 21 million people, close to 10 million people bank with us mm -hmm. right throughout the country also gives us uh, a sense of responsibility that we need to safeguard their interest and uh, so therefore there would be a message that goes out to the potential uh, savers as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that is foremost in our mind. So core business remains uh, a very much a focus area. Of course, we, we want to look at how we develop around the core business, looking at other areas so that we can augment some of the stuff that we do to, uh, to uh, enhance profitability, uh, enhance productivity and also help the country as a whole in its development strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, as you talk about NSB as the pioneer in the savings business, I'd like to know what uh, new initiatives you have taken and how you actually look at propagating the savings habit among, continue to propagate this among our uh, general public. Very important question. If you really look at where Sri Lanka is placed, our domestic savings rate as in comparison to the GDP, we are at 23 percent. It was about 26 percent about five, six years ago. So it has sort of slid a little bit. So we need to reverse that. India is at 31. Thailand is also 31. Malaysia is about 33. Uh, Singapore is 53. Why I'm giving you all these statistics is that IMF, World Bank, most financial, uh, global financial institutions have, uh, through their research, have found out that there is a correlation between this rate and the country's development. Higher the rate, higher would be the development, the, the propensity to develop will be also higher, the ability to develop. So we need to a, reverse this sliding trend. B, uh, look at ways and means of sustain this increase. So there are two things that we need to do. And we as a responsible state institution, being the premier uh, saving institution, have a huge role to play here. And recently, I'll give you a classic example of what we are doing. Recently, we relaunched 
we have had this product for some time. We relaunch what we call NSP Reach. It's a, it's a small device we take where through our branch network, our employees take to uh, uh, daily earners, you know, small business holders, be it a carpentry shop, be it a vegetable seller. While, earn, while earning, you can save. That is the type of message that you want. We want to change this habit of, it's not income less expenses that is saving, but it's income less savings should be your expenses. So what do savers look at primarily? I, we believe through research, they look at three things. Safety, they look at a re return, you need to have a reasonable return, and they look at convenience. To earn the return, you need to have, you need to, you, your money should be saved. Be the fact that, <coughs> sorry, as I told you, we are the bank which has the government guarantee, we become the safest place. We pay the highest rate of return in this country amongst all financial institutions uh, when it comes to uh, interest rate. Convenience, we are going to the doorstep of this small businessman or a housewife or a, a daily a person who is a, has a daily income. So while you earn, you are saving. So the convenience is there. So you are ticking all three boxes. Yes. This, this sounds very interesting. So, so does this mean you travel to these uh, entrepreneurs and business people on a daily basis at a particular time to collect their uh, savings and to bank them? How does it work? I'd like to know a little. Uh, that's, again, it's very important that, you know, it's, 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 it's all to do with uh, being there at the right time. Mm -hmm. That is what is important. So we have various batches going at various times through our 250 uh, branch network. Mm -hmm. So we have a, we'll have a branch uh, that, that will have a batch going in at maybe 11 o'clock in the morning and then again going at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But we might have a, depending on the location, we might have a batch in another branch mm -hmm. going at 9.30 in the morning or maybe 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So depending on the customer's need, we visit them. And we, we are there to collect those funds. And we have been extremely successful. I'll give you again some statistics. Last year, that is 2015, from January to August, this post collections alone was, uh, was at 3.1 billion rupees. Mm -hmm. This year, we have taken it to 4.7 billion rupees. That is exactly a 50% increase. Mm -hmm. In terms of number of transactions, the increase has been 55%. Whereas the propensity to save countrywide would have come down, but this product, we have taken it the other way. That is why the reversal is necessary. And you know, we need to do initiate programs of this nature to increase the domestic savings rate. In which area of the country has this program been a success? Right, right through. I mean, I, I, you can't sort of single out a, a particular district or a location or a particular place. It has been fairly widespread. Of course, there are, we face challenges in remote areas because of the distances you need to travel, uh, the opportunities people have. So, uh, so how we mitigate is through uh, the fact that we sort of, we, 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 we have told our customer base that we will be coming at a particular time, so be ready. So we, we have sort of certain operational strategies in place to, right. to circumvent those things. I also understand that it must be a lot of uh, human resources that you have to uh, pull out and it's amassing a lot of resources in order to get this program in place. How challenging is it for you um, since, since it's moving away a little from the tra traditional banking method? We consider this as a national duty. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, there is an operational cost. We need to have the people, we need to have the transportation organized. But we believe this is a national duty. And we are, from an institutional perspective, we are the best place to do that. So whilst our uh, cost of mobilization may be a little bit higher than a person who is coming in traditionally to the bank, where we'll be, that customer will be served within the branch. We are going out. But we feel that 
we can look at those incremental deposits to be mobilized. And uh, more importantly, we are helping the country, helping the state in terms of mobilizing the deposit, will be, which will be parked from an investment point of view for development of the country. Uh, as I did mention to you earlier, you have exposure, you have global experience, exposure outside of Sri Lanka. How do you bring that here to the National Savings Bank, a state bank? Things, uh, how, how it works here is different. But how do you bring your experience and couple it with what's, uh, what's going on here? And some of the, some of the uh, customary activities, I think we can probably resonate some of those things here. Um, automation is one area. Mm -hmm. I think that's one area uh, NSB uh, could improve and will improve. And we are investing quite a lot in, uh, again, through bringing about a, a more digitalized experience to our customer network through palm health devices, through easy payment mechanisms, through easy savings uh, programs, things like that. You know, it's all to do with convenience and, and the engagement the customer has. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think it's a, uh, another very important area is the aspect of productivity. I mean, we keep talking about this quite a lot. Uh, some uh, institutions carry out uh, successfully, others not so successfully, etc. Uh, but NSB, I think we, we have initiated a lot of programs to improve productivity. Bring about an experience where there is engagement with the customer and everyone in our organization becoming a little bit more sales and marketing oriented. So you, you enhance the potential of each and every employee and every, each and every resource that we have. That's how you bring about productivity. So are we to look at uh, a different NSB National Savings Bank uh, working differently, focusing on different aspects and I'm sure things will change with the automation process in place. Yeah, we are cautiously optimistic. It's a, it's a cultural change that we need to bring about, but I'm confident that we can bring about that cultural change because people embrace, people understand this need. We have to be competitive. We can't be sitting on our laurels that we are a state bank, people trust and you know, have the necessary confidence. We compete with most private banks, if not all. We compete with all the other state banks. So uh, it's, it's a... I mean, want of a better word, it's a battleground. Mm -hmm. But we love those uh, situations. That's the only way we could improve our services. Am I right? Yes, yeah. certainly. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, so, uh, talking a little about the banking uh, sector itself, there's, there's, you see a little bit of a reluctancy towards extending project loans. How do you see this aspect? Uh, reluctance, yes, there may be little reluctance uh, there are a few aspects that you need to understand. See, the banks will always try to match their funding. When I say match their funding, it's, it's to do with, you know, you, 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 you borrow, you, you absorb deposits, you take deposits in. And those deposits may be for a certain period of time. We have savings which are which are rollover deposits, it's keep coming, keep going. We have fixed deposits, which may be for one year, two years, five years, six months, three months, etc. Project loans generally tend to be of a longer tenor, the, the, the need or the tenor of the loan, the period of the loan. So how do you match that? So you're having short-term deposits, which you need to dedicate, allocate to long-term investments. So there are interest rate risks the banks need to take. And that may be one of the reasons that the banks are a little reluctant. But if you can manage that in a manner that, you know, you have refinancing facilities available, you have rollover facilities available, you have variable interest rates mechanisms, then you can move towards, move towards, dedicate more funds to project loans. It's a lot to do with having less of an interest rate exposure, the differential exposure. 
because if we, if let's, I, I'll take a hypothetical situation so you will understand that. You can take a deposit, let's say at 10 percent, maybe for one year, deposits of one million rupees. And if you want to dedicate that entire one million into project loan, project loans are generally five, seven, ten years. How do you price your loan? Because you are paying 10 percent on your deposit for one year. You will not have that deposit, you run the risk of not having that deposit after one year. The, the depositor will withdraw that money. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will not have that funding for the loan, for the balance period of the, uh, for the loan. So you'll have only for one year. And the, when you go in for a fresh deposit for the balance period, let's say the loan is for five years, the balance period of the four years, that may be at a higher cost. So you will be, if, if, the, if the cost goes up in, the inter, in a rising interest rate scenario, you may be, you may be having to take the de, another deposit in at 12 percent. But if you are given that project loan at 11 percent, for the balance four years, you are losing 1 percent. You are taking the deposit in at 12 percent, you are paying the customer, but you are given the facility at 11 percent. So those are the risks the banks have to manage. How do we that really overcome it. this? Of course, there are there are ways and means of you, you try to match your funds by taking long term deposits as much as possible to match the product loans. But you reprice them in a manner that you, you, you manage the overall portfolio and wherever you lose, you try to gain in some other areas. So that's how you reprice. But the, the age old uh, belief that uh, higher the period, longer the period, higher would be the rate, will always stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'd like to know uh, what plans you have for NSP. I know during the, the earlier part of our discussion you mentioned about the automation plan and the pr plans to enhance productivity of the overall uh, bank, but, but what plans do you have in terms of expanding your reach as, as the uh, nation's premier savings uh, institution? Yeah, the reach is important, but we also should ensure that the reach is meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, meaningful to all our stakeholders. So we have the uh, state as, as, as NSB's owner, as our owner. We have our own employees. We have our customer base. We have a supplier. So it must be meaningful to all stakeholders. But saying that from a, from a growth point of view, from an initiatives point of view, yes, Digitalization, automation will have to come in. We have to, that's the only way I believe we can improve customer delivery capabilities. We can launch more, better products to all segments. We have products for all segments. We will be, be, be more business relevant. That's what I mean. Then I also believe in that if we can develop, further develop our employee network, a 4,000 employee network, they, are able to contribute, better contribute, they will benefit, the institution benefit, the government benefits. So we have several development programs structured for the employees as well. And most importantly, our customer network, customer base, we need to protect them. We need to give them the best possible return. So there are two ways. One we can, one is that we can uh, get our, uh, in, improve our product receive, as we spoke about. Secondly, uh, cut down all the costs, unnecessary costs, wherever possible. Secondly, uh, look at ways and means of improving our credit quality. Right. That's also important. So there are so many ways. So core remains our savings and around it we will look into relaunch, rebrand some of our products, mm -hmm. introduce new products which are more business relevant, more market relevant, improve their productivity, automation, so we'll attack from all sides. <laughs> <laughs> and we look forward to a lot uh, from NSB this year and of course going forward. All the very best to you in your future endeavors and uh, of NSB. Thank you. Thanks so much for giving me that opportunity. We had with us Mr. Aswin De Silva, the chairman of National Savings Bank, joining us on Weekend Dialogue on Biz Roundup. Do stay with us. We have more coming up next after this break.